RC coming to you from the man cave. Now, as I told you I would do, uh, I know it's been a, a several, about three or four weeks, or about, what, two weeks now, since I had the rough and tumble crash with the uh, free wing uh, F-14A twin 64 here. Let's talk about what happened in the crash as far as damage. The radar structure, the little foam that uh, is underneath here, I don't know what it's called, but that got damaged, so I went ahead and removed it the rest of the, used a little bit of debonder and removed it the rest of the way. The nose gear itself um, was slightly bent, and then the little knuckle that tr actually moves the, uh, the rudder part, that little knuckle shattered, and the plastic, the scale feature, they all broke, okay? But it was all contained within the retrack itself, the, the structure, not uh, within the plane. So it was clear all I really needed was replace the retrack. Well, $33, I think it was $33.95. New retrack came in and it was I simply un it was very simple to do. I unbolted it, followed my wire, went, it goes underneath, had to remove the battery tray, the battery wood, followed it back, had two zip, two uh, ties in there or twisty ties, and then it plugged in. I just unplugged it, full, fished it out. Fished in the new one, bolted it back in, plugged the wire right back in. Instead of using them wire zip ties, I replaced them, or, or them wire, like bread ties they had, I replaced them with zip ties, non-metal, less conductive, and uh, secured them and put it right back in place. It works like it should, brand new. Uh, just snap the plastic uh, bits back in there and it all works just fine. So that part's repaired. I also had a scuff underneath the one wing that was freely moving after the crash. And as I said in the crash, as I suspected, I was right. The push rods that have the ball links on either end, the one that connects up to the um, the big metal honking servo in there, the actual ball link itself, the neck of it uh, shattered. So it took the kinetic energy. There was no damage to any of the servos. So I took both. I was able. I just happened to have another ball link head. I just put them back on, got them both measured right, got them synced up with each other, reattached them. But before I reattached them, I said, I'm not going to let this happen to me again. This is what I suggest you do. Get you some tiny little washers, just tiny little washers that are real thin, just enough to keep that ball link from coming up. I undid the screw and the little, the little uh, winglet screw on or a little uh, nut underneath, pulled the, th put the, uh, pulled the screw out, put the ball link back in, put that little bitty washer on top and then ran the, the screw back down through it and that way the ball link can't get up over that washer now and it works perfectly, it doesn't bind and now I know that those ball links will not be able to pop off again without pulling the whole strip screw and everything out. If it's that bad, well, then you've got a bad crash. Anyways, so, but now I've secured those and they work great. I deleted the model. I'm not using anybody else's advice I mean, Wesley has his reasons for why he says 65% or whatever, you know. I'm going to trust the manufacturers. And the manufacturer said what, um, to use the CG on the fuse. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this. I believe I was going by everybody else's CG, which they're finding on the wings. And it is a little bit different if you go by the fuse. If you put the wings all the way out and get 5,000 where everybody's putting it, the, the CG is actually here, whereas it's a little bit different. This is a, just a, not very much, but it's a little bit different. Here's the CG on the plane. There's the CG on the fuse. And let me put it over here. And without not letting my shirt touch, because the gear's down, slightly tail heavy, right, with the gear down. All right, now, let's put the gear up how you would fly. Sure my fingers are out of the way. Now I'll put my fingers back on that CG mark. Okay. And looky there. Looky there. Perfectly level. I'm I feel very, very good about that. Whenever the gear's down, slightly tail heavy is good. That's gonna help you land. That means you don't have to you just bring her in straight because she's gonna naturally rock back just a touch anyways. So you don't really need to, you should be flaring with this plane. I flared way too much too too quickly, and that's what caused the, the, the very abrupt uh, wing rock and the uh, tip tip stall. 
Uh, it wasn't the speed, it was the flaring. And, it, and folks, what you mean, everybody had their comments. I mean, I, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of comments I had. Everybody said, well, it was a tip. So I was also flying on a day that's way too windy and a cross breeze. Unpredictable Florida weather, unpredictable Florida wind. A lot of that was a cross breeze too. I should not have been flying that day. I was so eager to fly, to fly this, that I was trying to play catch up and I made a bad choice. Should not have flown it that day. But looky there. Okay, so now we've shown you, you're saying, well, that's great where you got the battery at. I have the battery a little bit different, just a little bit different than what everyone was saying. Not much. Yeah, the merit takes a while. I pretty much have it, well, yeah, I get, instead of having it tucked, the 5,000 tucked up underneath, just inside, I've got it just on that edge. And that's where I find that that CG is perfect now. Now, let's talk about, uh, just so you, I don't know if I cover this or not, but that was my, it's an AR 10 100T, 10 channel telemetry receiver. There's no safe or anything involved um, because I wanted to use the gyro in this. Now, the book says, I'm going by what the book said. Book said rates need to be 100% on, for high, 100% on the ailerons, 100% on the rudder, and 100% on the elevator. Okay? Low rates are 80% on the ailerons, 80% on the rudder and stay in 100% on the elevator. So let me make sure that you're at an angle where you can see this real quick. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit, center in on that plane. I want you to pay attention to the control surfaces. Now, okay, so my high rates, again, are 100% all the way around, 30% expo as they recommend. So there's high rates, high rate rudder, High rate elevator, high rate ailerons. Okay, low rate, low rate is 80%. Okay, on the ailerons and on the rudder, and still 100% on the elevators. Now this is what is interesting, and this is where I. There's another area that I screwed up. This model use the gyro fly in the gyro, okay? Or at the very least, take off and land with a gyro. Now, I'm not talking about the wind mitigation. AS3. AS3. I'm talking about the self-leveling. Pay attention. Listen, this is this is what the interesting thing is. All right. Safe is on. And we all know that when you have self-level or any kind of a self-level gyro of all the E-flight planes, everything we're used to, that when you turn on safe or safe level, that you're your control surfaces are greatly reduced. Not with this one. Safe is on. Safe is on. Okay, I'm gonna turn the gyro off. Experience you see it move a little bit. Notice any change, okay. Safe mode. Safe mode, look at them ailerons. Look at that elevator. Experienced mode. Gyro off. Okay, so with the gyro on, all it's going to do is help bring you back to center, okay? Um, I think if you hit the start sticks hard enough, though, it will get to, you will be able to go upside down because you still have all that throw. Now, more than likely, mode. I'll fly around in the AS3X mode, but I'm, you bet your bottom dollar, safe. from now on, I'm taking off in the safe gyro and I'm landing in the safe gyro. I'll fly in the AS3X mode or their their intermediate mode, but I'm landing and taking off and safe, especially, and I might even just fly around safe because this thing, you still have full control in that you don't find that in other planes that have that kind of a gyro. You know, usually it won't allow you to move so much. Um, make sure your latch is secure. Um, so that's my, we went over the CG, go by the, CG on the frame, not on the wings. There is a difference, and that's what the free wing is saying to do also. To show you, see, <laughs> trying to self-level on me. 
me put it back to no gyro. Um, to show it to you, see them black marks? There's a, there, you'll feel a little indentation. Now, visually, it does kind of look like it lines up, but this CG is actually a little more more uh, forward toward the front of the plane than the, than the, the uh, fuse uh, CG. Just a little bit, okay? But that little bit can make a huge difference. Actually, we had it. Oh, yeah. And to show, and the other thing you need to do, let me show you the back of these wings, all right? Speed mode. By the book, it said set the travels on your wings and your travel part to 140 both ways, not just one way, but both ways. Normal so mode. with the wings all the way out on the travel part, it's 100, 140 all the way in. Speed mode. 140 all the way in. And then, of course, I have the middle setting i don't know what i i might just try to fly like that sometimes but Normal. anyways so make sure you go this is set up i set up exactly by the book i did however leave it with the elevator settings with being 22 millimeters up from the from the top of the fuse and that was in his video and wesley's video but that's also in the in the manual to put up to level these at 100 or at, at 22 millimeters down from the top of the fuse there so I'm leaving that alone. So I'm going to fly it, and I'm going to do it by, it's perfectly by the book. At 100% throws, and then low rate of 80% with 100% all day long on the elevator. Um, can't think of anything else we did. I had to replace the gear. I got a little scuff mark on the one wing. We'll fix the uh, push rods. The rudders were a little crunched a little bit down here. Um, I may, but they're they're in there secure. I took them off just to make sure everything was working fine. They're a little crunched, but they're not misshapen. And they still look nice and even. And they're just as wiggly as they were. I mean, there's only three little screws and it's made of foam. It would be nice. I don't know if there is or not, but if there was a, a rod of carbon fiber up up through these. There may be one, but it's painted black, so you can't really tell. Um, the other thing is I damaged the nose, and now I had to affix the nose permanently. So luckily she fits, put the wings back, she sits on one of my stands in here, no problem. But, um, so I won't be able to stand her on her nose. But anyways, I've also got the uh, KM models, afterburner, KM models, thank you uh, for the afterburners for um, send them out to me for review. Now, something else, a little announcement. Um, I have joined the Motion RC, um, their beta affiliate program. I mean, I have not bought a single plane from them since the affiliate program. I've got, I can't even tell me thousands of dollars of planes that I have spent on my own money, my money. This plane was $4.99, I paid $4.99. Okay, I got the Yas 3039. I got the big fulcrum back there behind you. I've got probably 15 other free wing planes around here. And so I've got thousands of dollars, big 90 Raptor hanging above your head there. Um, so I figured if I'm going to be flying these planes around and showing, hey, this is where it came from, this is how you get it, and this is what to look out for, then I'll even be honest. If, if I feature this plane on one of my videos, and you say, yeah, I think I'm going to buy that plane. Well, then use my link and I get a little cut. Full transparency. Full transparency. That they decided to invite me in for their affiliate program. And I'm like, well, I'll spend enough money with you. That's nice. <laughs> but it wouldn't matter. I'm still going to show these planes. I'm still going to, uh, whether I'm an affiliate or not, I'm still going to buy it. I love the free wing product. Um, I've had a few heartaches with uh, free wing, but I, uh, with the free wing Emotion Motion RC, but who hasn't? I've had a lot of great things with Motion RC. Had problems with Horizon Hobby and E-Flight and had great experiences also. So it's, it's that way everywhere. Don't, don't just say, well, that's a crappy plane that you got there and then write the whole business off. No, that just that plane. Maybe, you know, let them fix it. Let them work. Give them a chance to work with you. Yeah, I found the hard way with Motion RC, give them a chance to work with. They will work with you. You do have to prove that things are wrong. You do have to take pictures and maybe a few videos and send them in. You know, because they got to justify a return, but they will work with you, okay? Folks, um, that's really, I know I got off on a tire right there on, on a 
little uh, story there, but um, that's what I did with the Tomcat. I've yet to fly her like this. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I unfortunately, here it is early Thursday morning and I got to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, my wife won't be to, available to film till next Tuesday. I want to say the 16th. So maybe the 16th of April, I may actually be able to fly this beautiful thing. And then I want my wife to be able to film it. So there you go. Folks, that is the, the Tomcat, the F-14A twin 64 millimeters by Freewing. If you'd like to buy this plane once it gets back in stock, because they're out of stock, because they're popular, but once it gets back in stock and you want to buy it, please use my link, okay? I'd appreciate it. I ain't going to lie to you. I get a little kickback, okay? But uh, there you go. Y'all have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. And don't forget, stay family.